In the last video, I neglected to mention one important bit in the timer control special function registers, and that is this one, this TCS bit. This is down in bit one. Um, that determines what the source is for the timer. If it's equal to one, then the source is the T1 clock for timer one. It's T1 clock pin on the PIC32, an external input. And if it's a zero, then the peripheral bus clock is the input to the counter timer. Um, so there's one of these registers for each of the five counter timers. And there are five um, input pins on your PIC32, T, T1 clock up to T5 clock that you can use for external inputs. OK, so that's the TCS bit. So let's um, take a look again at our block diagram and talk about the interrupts that can be generated by a timer. So remember, we have the input. And the input could be if the TCS bit is 0, then the input is the peripheral bus clock. And if it's a 1, then the input is, and I'll talk about timer 1, just to be concrete then the input is the T1 clock external pin on the PIC32. So that's the input. It goes over to our prescaler. Oops. Prescaler 1, which may reduce the number of pulses. And then it goes over to the actual counter itself, timer one. And remember, we have a period register where we can set the value at which timer one rolls over, period register one. And if we don't set any value in there, it's going to default to 2 to the 16 minus 1, so it's going to let the counter count up all the way before rolling over. OK, but what happens here now is when the period register matches the count on the timer, so on match, we can generate an interrupt if we want. And this is something we have to decide when we set up the interrupt bits for this particular for this particular timer. So we have the option now of every time the timer counts up to the, the value on the period register to generate an interrupt. And one reason we might want to do that is if we're doing real-time control and we want to generate an interrupt at a fixed frequency, uh, maybe at 1,000 hertz, then we can set the period register so that there's a match every one millisecond. And then we generate an interrupt, jump to an interrupt service routine that does something and then returns. So this is a very common use of timers to generate fixed frequency uh, control routines.